Boeing has had a rough start to the year. The plane maker has been forced to ground its biggest moneymaker, the 737 MAX, after two deadly crashes in five months. The question is, what happens with the 737 MAX? And to what degree does Boeing enjoy the trust of airlines and the traveling public once the 737 MAX has been certified as safe by the FAA and other regulators. On Wednesday, the plane maker said first quarter core profits had declined 13% as the firm halted 737 deliveries and costs rose by a billion dollars. Revenues from its commercial aircraft division fell 8.5% to $11.8 billion, just short of analyst forecasts. Prior to the crashes, the firm estimated its bottom line would increase by 24% this year. Now it's unclear how the current crisis will affect earnings, and Boeing has pulled its guidance for the year. But it's determined to get back on a steadier course. Across the company, we're focused on safety, returning the 737 MAX to service, and earning and re-earning the trust and confidence of customers, regulators, and the flying public. The plane maker is working on a software update to address a glitch in the anti-stall system, which has been linked to the Lion Air crash in October and the Ethiopian Airlines disaster last month. Boeing reportedly hopes to get the fix approved by regulators in May, which would enable the company to resume deliveries and accept payments by July. It's better than anything else Boeing has. So as long as they're able to fix these problems, I expect orders to continue to, not, to, to maintain their order book. To date, Boeing has delivered around 370 of its MAX series planes, and it's received orders for 4,600 more. That's an order book worth $600 billion, an amount the company can't afford to lose. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World. Well, let's get more on Boeing's woes now with Chris Roebuck in London. He's a visiting professor of transformational leadership at the Cass Business School. Welcome back to Money Talks, Chris. The 737 MAX crisis is clearly taking a toll on Boeing's bottom line, but they've largely been in line with expectations. Do you expect the company to take a bigger hit in future quarters? Yeah, logically, I would describe perhaps quarter one as the gathering storm. Uh, quarter two, if it goes well and they can start uh, delivering again in July, as the storm. But if that doesn't work out, the storm could last into quarter three. Now, we have to remember that the plane was grounded on the 11th of March. So proportionately in terms of the quarter, you know, given the impact over those few weeks, that was quite significant. If you now look at a quarter where the whole quarter could be groundy, that is a, a major problem. But, but it's not just about this software issue and getting the plane up in the air. As the um, head of Boeing was sort of quoted in terms of we need to regain trust, there is a fundamental question about some of the leadership decisions that were taken in Boeing, some of the questions about the reputation of Boeing after these two crashes and questions about the legal liability of Boeing as a result of those crashes. And there are people who are suggesting that there are leaders within Boeing who have in the recent past put profitability ahead of safety, which for an aircraft manufacturer is a game changer. Yes, let's talk about that leadership aspect, because as you say, there has been uh, some talk uh, about the leaders of the company being quite arrogant and perhaps a, a, a bit of hubris in the mix there when it came to this uh, yeah. rolling out the 737 MAX aircraft. Do you expect heads to roll sometime in the near future? I think now there's been two crashes and the legal world and uh, other regulators other than the FAA are going to be very sceptical uh, because other regulators look to the FAA. Now other regulators are looking at the role of the FAA in terms of allowing self-certification for safety through Boeing uh, as putting the FAA perhaps on the second level. But if we take a step back, if you think about this, Boeing needed a new efficient aircraft to meet the needs of the market. What they did was they bolted bigger engines onto an existing aircraft to save money, make more profit, that made it unstable. They introduced software to deal with the instability, but the critical indicator for the crew to show that the signals going to the software from the sensors were wrong was an extra, not included as a basic safety mm. to make a little bit more money. And then 
in terms of pilot training to keep costs down and increase profits for speedy implementation, they said pilots only needed to be trained on an iPad for two hours. Yes. No simulator training. So that the people in the situation with Ethiopia and Lion Air had somewhere in the region of under one minute if the software malfunctioned on takeoff to work out what happened and what to do about it. Questions are going to be asked about who authorised and allowed those things to happen mm. and who in the FAA said it was OK, because that has breached trust. Chris, let's talk quickly about Boeing's reputational damage because that's been more hard to quantify. Mm. What sort of a hit has that taken? It's taken, as I just said, the, the, the path by which we ended up getting to Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines illustrates to both regulators outside the US and to the travelling public that there is an indication that Boeing is more concerned about profitability than it is about safety. If the investigations reveal that that is indeed the case, the reputational damage could be colossal and long-lasting. And it means that airlines might say, OK, we don't want our 737 orders anymore. Mm. We're going to go to Airbus. Now, it's not just about airlines. With the Ethiopian crash, there were a significant number of the travelling public, particularly in US, who were looking online to see what the aircraft type was before they booked a right. ticket. So it's just as much about the travelling public. Sure is. OK, Chris Roebuck, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you for your analysis, as always.